Hello, Natron Nation and others who are watching or subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm coming to you live from Cleveland, Ohio. Well, more likely I'm from the suburb of Cleveland, which is called Euclid, Ohio. And I'm coming to you today with a pie note that was developed by a gentleman by the name of Francois, Francois or Francis Grassard. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right, friends. Or grass, as I call you as a nickname, I still have to get the French names pronunciation correctly. But please forgive me, but hope you like this little, little particular demo of your particular node called ZMAS. But right now, what you see here is just a regular setup of a project that I've done years ago. I'm surprised I even still had this file in the OpenEXR file format from Blender. And this is when Blender first incorporated the OpenEXR file format when they started doing their own compositing with the first generation of the um, the compositor, I believe, is when they had it then, and probably like the next version when I had started dealing with um, Blender with all their compositing. What you see right here is actually a two-layer, two-part of this particular image. Now I have this read node here and I have it set up right there in the pre mold But technically if I come here and put it on uh, opaque, you see all the other images and stuff that I've had back there when me using the spears, me using like those, um, what you call those things there. That particular add-on that allows you to create mountains or it could have been a, I forgot the name of that, um, that modifier that was in there where you're able to take like a black and white image and you can create height maps. Um can't remember the name of it, but this is what it was this is what it is. And I said, you know what? I've noticed that um I got my alpha channel there and I noticed that inside this particular node, not particular node, but this EXR file, I actually had like a Z depth in this particular file because it's information in the back right here it's actually a distance from this so what's actually giving me the the um the depth map of everything is going to be this particular range of, inf of mountain ranges and valleys and crevices whatever you want to call it so what i've done i've actually broken down everything to using the shuffle node the z mass node and using the equalize node and i explained to you in a few minutes why i'm using each one of these well, this is something to the best of my ability. Let me first say, even though I'm doing all these demos, I am not a compositor. I am an editor by trade and musician and everything is music producer by trade and audio engineer by trade. But I love the art form of compositing. Hopefully one day I will get better at it. So without further ado, let me finish continuing about this particular image and the rest of these nodes. Now. This shuffle node, which is, as you know, is a very powerful node. It will allow you to double click on that and you can click on the things and be able to bring in, in these individual channels and pipe them to an RGB channel, an RGBA channel. So if you know, if we click inside here, you see that, you know what, there's a Z node there. I mean, there's a Z my multiplane. Well, as you know, in OpenEXR, we have now have the multiplane that allow us to have access to more layers when we need to combine them without having to worry about piping them through the mass and every so on and so forth, we can actually just go into a particular output or input channel and just say, you know what, let me just have this channel here uh, be displayed or piped or converted to the output channels or the input channel converted to the output channel, so on and so forth. You know, um, the next update and versions, these particular things, forwards, backwards, this um, disparity left and disparity right. These will become people who is into the 3D animation and as well as, as well as those who are going to get into optical flow information. So he's going to be your best friend. So without further ado. So what I want to do, what I wanted to do was take the Z depth of this particular channel here that was down here. And I wanted to pipe the Z depth into every individual channel. So therefore it will let me have this thing piped to channel two. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to viewer two, and I'm gonna click on this. And I'm gonna activate it, and as you can see here, it's not really much there. Because why? Because when you're dealing with well, depending on the particular application that you're coming from, or you're developing, or you have created a a Z depth. Remember, 
z depth information in 3d application is based on vector math so in order for you to see the actual vector math and the depth of range you have to convert it into or normalize it into a range where it'll allow you to be able to see it so without further ado i it's in there but in order for us to see it we need to come down here to this particular node here now this node here is called z mass and what the z mass does it'll allow you to let me double click on that to find your center value your tightness your contrast your offset and your gamma so depending on your 3d uh, 3d application your z depth can be where starting from the tip of the camera that's going outward or it can be like the um from the rear coming forward because you know in certain applications you have z forward and you have z backwards so on and so forth you know every application has three applications have like different um vector values and how it's generated for a z depth cinema 4d has something different maya uh, houdini blender modo light uh, light works no light wave i'm sorry light works is, uh, is an editor so they all have different ways of, of them generating that z depth information so if i was to come here and activate it you see right there that you only see just the z depth information from the mountain range because why and if i showed you before the mountain range has okay let me click on this the mountain range is the only one that has like the alpha channel so this only just gives me the, the z depth range of the alpha channel base information come back here so take this right here we can just deactivate that for basic for right now come to the z the mass and you see up here that all this information right here is like it goes from light all the way to dark gray and not even everything else is black but watch what happens when i start making these adjustments to the offset the offset basically gets blacker gets brighter but you start losing a lot of details of where the depth information is if you go negative so if i go forward you start seeing that i start getting a little bit more uh contrast between the foreground and going to the background but as you've seen i'm also too losing a lot of information there as well so you have to be very careful when you're dealing with z depth information there because you want to try to get the full range as much as possible right there's 14 as you see if i go between 14 and 15 it gives me a little bit contrast between the different valleys and the ridges and it's also also the depth of this particular size landscape that is from the camera when i was in blender i said look from this point to this certain amount of distance from the camera it's going to be my z depth range so that's what that offset is doing there and the contrast allow you to say you know how much you want to flood those particular areas there or normalize those particular areas there with the, using the camera now there's other tools and other features inside this thing here as well that allows you to do that so i'm not going to go no further than that because i want to try to maintain all these particular ridges here so you have the contrast offset and gamma the particular value like tightness and center value well if i increase the contrast you see it gets goes all the way black and it'll come down all the way down you know it gets too white so you have to like try to maintain the balance i try to keep it at zero now what i want to do from here it says you know what i want to try to brighten it up a little bit without relying too much on trying to figure where how far do i need to go with the decimal values to get that nice little complete almost complete white point here and go all back to the grayscale dark spec um dark specs back back here back here okay sorry for my rambling i'm a little tired right now it's up two o'clock this morning doing other tutorials and posting so i'm just not waking up and i want to try to get this out um get this done so there's is this equalize node now i'm not familiar i think this basically was developed by the natron developers like alex and fred i don't think um like uh, grassard or olier would i'll call them ole it had developed this, this particular node but just to give you uh uh the effect of what it does um i guess what it does it equalizes the pixels i guess, I guess based on their brightness and the or their midtones or their their shadows i really don't know 
actually how this actual plugin actually work I just know when you apply it to something you says equalize it seems like all pixels basically becomes they, they I guess is the average between all the pixels and they sometimes this image might get brighter or it might get darker depending on these levels that you choose to use here in the minimum value in the maximum value so to show you what this particular Z depth field looks like I'm going to click on equalize and activate it and as you can see here it gave me it gave me exactly what, what I was somewhat looking for to have like this little beginning this part right here to be brighter and as you see it the further it goes back from the camera it gets darker now the way to adjust that inside the equalize node if you see right here I have it at 0 0.044 so it tells you to give you the minimum pixel values considering for the histogram comp computations all pixel values lower than the minimum value would not be counted so okay now as you see I'm adjusting the minimum value and you can see it's adjusting my brightness and grayscales of the depth channel and that's the main reason why I use that equalizer and as a matter of fact let me just tell you this I said you know what let me see if I can try to get this particular effect with the equalizer node had no clue that it would be able to give me this particular effect and that's the one thing you got to love about node based compositing especially with the Natron is that these particular nodes even though they are designed to do one thing because it's node based you can create all kinds of pipelines upstreams downstreams and so on and so forth to get different kind of effect that you not didn't even know that that hey the algorithms inside this node can can do that particular effect so that's what I have here so I kept it at 44 and it, you know it comes to the maximum value what will happen when if I lower it you know it somewhat basically starts to clamp down on my brightness on my foreground so I'm just gonna leave it at one let that be over that so some you say okay so what is the purpose of doing all that so let me come back here to um, my read note piped it into one okay I'm back sorry for the other mishaps from before I figured out the problem why I was not getting the effect that I was looking for and the reason why was because I had the Z dev and RGB information pipe it into the effect when I should have had just reg just the regular RGBA dot R red channels. Now, so to go back to one, you see this where his is actually is the regular channel. So if I click on, I'm going to select these. I'm going to disable them. And I'm going to enable the blur. As you see, the blur has everything already pretty much blur it out a little bit so let me just go ahead and raise it back up to that amount As you can see right here the, inf 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 uh, the image is blurred so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna activate all these and you can see that once this information here has now been properly piped in as a red channel going to see here it's only just this particular section down here that's being blurred where everything else in the back is being left alone just the mountains and ridges of the parts that's being blurred now I deactivate them okay. the whole image being blurred activate them just that little section there and the same thing too here when I say you know what I want to add like certain blue color so once I let's do this deactivate those activate this one you see I'm getting all this little blue information here let me try to make this a little more pronounced for you come in here Maybe they can be coming down a little, a little bit more blue. So that's also too going on into the I mean it's being piped into the mass section for the RGBA R channel. So if I come over here and activate these here once again, you see here that based on the Z depth information that's been piped into an RGB channel to come out as a grayscale, I'm using the R channel because you can't really um, use regular vector data to as a, a coloring mechanism or a shading or grading mechanism you have to pipe that into an RGB channel that use the grayscale to give you this particular effect here 
and that's all because of this Z mass node. I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with this, but I just wanted to show everybody that, hey, if you're coming from a 3D application and you want to use the, the, the 3D depth information, vector data information as a mask to apply color or do some kind of kind of separation with an image by being able to, like, say, for instance, place objects in front or behind based on your 2D data information or compositing, there is a way to do it. And I'm hoping basically this demonstration will... Uh, give you multiple ideas and better understanding how that particular node works. Well, my name is Omar Brown. I'm the admin for Natron Nation, and I thank you for listening and watching. Please join me at Natron Nation, a Facebook group. Or if you see this on YouTube, just subscribe to the YouTube, and I do my best to supply more tutorials. All right, thank you, and you have a good day.